When you own a forest, you have to look at it as your garden. And in the woods, you got a big garden. And you got to kind of look at it that way. You got to take care of it. And if you are in a process of getting the forest to pay for itself and maybe give you a little extra money too, you've got to grow good trees. You can't grow junk. A landowner's goals and objectives are what a forester has to implement. So one of the building blocks of successful management is a forest inventory. And a forest inventory is kind of that building block of the forest management plan. So there's all kinds of different inventories and one of my primary roles is understanding what the landowner needs to get out of an inventory. There's different purposes, maybe for an appraisal for a family estate or to put it into a trust. Um, there may be a, an inventory done for carbon sales. Um, there's also inventories done for timber harvesting and, and forest management purposes. And, and all of those different um, needs have different um, kind of baseline necessities that we need to collect. Some of the basic things that need to be collected on a forest to kind of get an idea of the inventory and, and future management of the property would be diameter, tree heights, tree species, basal area. We need to know what kind of trees are out there, how big they are, what species they are, when it was logged last, how fast the trees are growing, what the slopes are like, where the creeks are, we got any rare and endangered species. When you own a piece of ground, it's important to have as much information as you can get. So one of the very fortunate things about this property is that the landowner, Ed, has been monitoring and, and measuring things over the 50 years that he's been on the land. It's invaluable in terms of passing on of knowledge to future land managers and, and landowners in general, that they are our best resource in most instances because they know so much about their own property. The forester and the landowner have to be connected. They have to speak the same language. The material that we accumulate and build up is used to let us know where the volume is, whether the densities can take a thinning, and getting the material on maps and developing it off of uh, area photographs helps a lot. It gives you the information you need to manage the property. As a forester, we have many different tools to do growth and yield analysis. Then we can take that data and, and we can look at how often we want to space out income for the landowners. And so that's kind of the role of the RPF is figuring out um, the kind of the how-tos, you know, to facilitate the operation. Over the 50 plus years of management on this forest, we have some pretty good data. We know that it's growing at about three and a half percent annually. The history of the forest plays into the future of it. And so having that growth information really ties together the, the full picture that, you know, we're here for a short time and, and trees can be here for thousands of years and understanding growth is important in future decisions. My great-grandfather purchased this place in 1883. There really was no management until around 1974 when my grandmother passed away and it was up to me to pay the inheritance taxes. The landscape here was about two-thirds trees and one-third pasture land and Mother Nature was closing in on the pasture land and that's when I uh, got hold of Jim Abel and it was that point that we started active management of the forest. And I said, well, let's find out how much timber's here. And we did an inventory, and it said that we had about a million and a half board feet of timber. We also did an inventory that told us the growth. So we figured out the cash flow from this, and it turned out that he could make about twenty to $30,000 a year off of the growth on this property. You cut the trees that are growing the slowest, and you expand on the trees that are growing the fastest. So you accentuate your growth rate by taking out the poorer trees. It's just like a bank account. We have to keep the principal here, but we can log the interest. 
you start with 1.5 million, we logged 3 million, and we have 3.4 million left today. To make a long story short, the property has quadrupled in value. It's been a very good investment, but it takes an inventory, it takes the knowledge of the property, it takes a well-developed timber management plan. A landowner's goals and objectives are what a forester has to implement. And so understanding what those goals and objectives are drives what I recommend on a land and how we kind of see the land. Um, you know, from multiple use recreation to having a, you know, a plantation style tree farm to managing for conservation easements and carbon credits. It, it's kind of, you know, understanding what those landowners goals are and then me transferring those goals into a management. In the long run, the management of the forest has really made it possible to have it. We've tripled the value, tripled the volume, and we've switched the composition from 60% Douglas fir in our stand to 60% redwood. Because we're really looking at redwood as being a long-term, better tree to grow. So any place we can think we can grow a redwood tree, we plant a redwood tree. The forest is better off than when we started, and it's a enjoyable place to be, and people like coming here. And you like walking around looking at the trees. And we're able to keep it because we do thin out the forest a little bit every year. But it's doing things in small increments, a little bit at a time. So by just thinning it out, you're able to recover a little bit of timber and a little cash flow every year.